first time I looked inside a hive and saw the intricacy of what they do, it's just grabbed me. I think they're fascinating, the way they dance, the way they move, the way they collect pollen, the way they produce honey. They're fascinating. When you're actually working in the hive with them, they're so um, harmonious in the way that, that they do their lives. Uh, my name is Matt Stewart. Uh, I'm a science teacher here. I teach AP Bio and the freshman physics class. Hi, my name is Katie Jelinek. I'm Jeremiah Silverheart. Casey Leger, and these are my bees. <laughs> I like the way they smell. I like the way they fly. Something about the productivity and organization of them. Um, initially, we thought about beekeeping because we like to make mead and other things that use the, um, the hive product. By the time we were ready to actually start doing something about it, uh, we had become aware of colony collapse disorder and, um, you know, that sort of was becoming really public and so we, we began to think of it more in terms of uh, as a way to help the bees. Colony collapse disorder, um, it comes from lots of different sources. And this colony died because of pesticide, and this colony died because of fungus, and this colony died because of some other reason. Um, and so it's, it's not like an individual thing, it's a combination of different factors that are all coming together at the same time. The biggest thing I look for is varroa mite damage. Um, that's what I've been running after this whole year. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking for chewed cappings, other evidence of brood problems, uh, evidence of bees with viruses, and then also taking uh, samples to test for mites. So the Varroma mite is a, uh, it's a, it's an insect related to spiders and other arachnids, it, but it's really, really small. And these um, insects uh, can often be the ones that are infecting, uh, along with funguses or viruses. These mites are also um, an organism that will uh, live parasitically off of bees, cause them to become diseased, and then transmit various other diseases, and they can also be passed on from from bee to bee if those bees are interacting. The city actually offers some real opportunities for the bees because, you know, we have actually a much wider variety of food sources for them here in the city than you would, for instance, on a farm that just grows one thing. When these bees in industrial uh, agriculture are um, being sent out to pollinate one plant, all of those plants would be because they also have low genetic diversity they're all going to flower all at the same time and if you if farmers are building fields or constructing fields that are all that one type of crop that's all pollinating at once the bees get a lot of pollen all at one very specific amount of time but they're only eating one type of food ideally just like in humans, we want to have a diversity in our diet. We want to eat enough grains and fruits and vegetables and meats and eggs and, and fats. If we ate nothing but potato chips, we'd have enough calories, but we wouldn't have all those other nutrients to keep us healthy. Same thing for the bees. If the bees are eating nothing but almond flour pollen, uh, they would only get that one nutrient and they wouldn't have enough nutrients to help them fight off any disease that might be inflicting them like a virus. So we happen to live near uh, Mount Tabor Park. You know, there's, there's so much to choose from up there in terms of tree pollen, but then also in, uh, in the spring, we get the blackberries. Yeah, and then, you know, then we have neighbors that do organic gardening. We don't really run into a time of year when there's nothing for the bees to eat. I, you know, like a lot of places, there are a couple times a year where it can get really scarce. In a city, you end up actually having a bit more biodiversity than you might expect, more than a, than a agricultural fields where they're growing one crop, because you have all these different people who are growing all these plants. The problem is some of the plants can be toxic, like if you're growing some tropical plant, um, in your yard that's not native to the Northwest, um, it might be toxic to our native bee population. 
uh, people in Portland who will grow, uh, let their yards grow native population bees, like the bee sanctuary. Sometimes people have signs about that. And those pollinator gardens will have enough diversity of plants to help uh, not just bees, but other flies and butterflies and damselflies and all these other pollinators. And it helps to increase the biodiversity. Native bees. I think it's about um, not being human centric and, you know, understanding that there are other species that have a right to exist. And, you know, um, even the smallest things on the planet have a real function here and a right to be here. So, you know, yay, save the bees. <laughs>